Hello, this is Maria from Four Season Foraging, a Minneapolis-based business that teaches you to safely and sustainably work with wild edibles. And today we are learning about purslane, a wonderful edible weed that grows everywhere and is super tasty and super nutritious. So looking forward to sharing that with you. But before we get into the video, just want to say thanks for watching. If you like it, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell for notifications. It helps me out a lot. And if you're able to, you can join me on Patreon. The link is right down there in the description box. And through that, you can pledge a small monthly dollar amount to help me keep producing these free informative videos for you all. So thanks a lot. So I'm on the ground here today to talk to you about this plant, purslane. It is a common herbaceous plant that grows across all of the lower 48 US states. It is native to Europe and Asia, so you'll find it in other places of the world too. But here in the US, it's super common and you'll find it growing in places like this. So like roadsides, trail sides, sidewalks, even in sidewalk cracks. It's definitely a like weedy type of plant. Like you'll find it growing basically everywhere that has sun and soil. <laughs> but that's actually a great thing because it is so tasty and so good for you. And I definitely recommend that you try it. So let's start with a closer look at purslane. So it's a low growing sprawling plant see it spreading all across the ground here it usually doesn't get taller than like one or two inches it's usually really close to the ground but horizontally <laughs> it will go quite far and if you take a look at the leaves you can see that they have this kind of spatula shape where they're narrowest where it meets the stem and then broadest at the tip and they're kind of flattened off at the tip here and they are actually attached on the stem alternately but it can be really hard to see that because they often the leaves are often so bunched together that it looks more like they're growing opposite or in a whorl Just, yeah be aware of that when you're looking that Technically, they're alternate, but it looks more like a whorl, usually, when you see them. Another thing about purslane is that it's completely hairless, so it's totally smooth, no fuzziness whatsoever. And the stems and the leaves both have this, like, succulent appearance. Like, you can see how thick the stem is here, and then the leaves themselves are quite thick as well. And we don't have any open flowers here today. There's this one tiny little remnant of a flower, but the flowers are yellow and usually bipedaled, so sometimes four petaled or six petaled. And the petals have notches, so you can make it look like there's more than that, but if you look closely, you'll see that only four to six petals are actually attached. But the cool thing that we can see on these right now is the seed pods. So these are the seed pods when they're mature and open. This here is also a seed pod, but this one's not open yet. And what I think is so cool about these seed pods is that they look like little cups. They're like tiny little cups with tiny little black seeds in them that hold the seeds. And as you can see, in this one, it like starts off as a capsule, and then when it's fully mature, the capsule splits open, and all these tiny little seeds become exposed, and then those just spill out and create more purslane. Here's another seed capsule that's not open yet. So yeah, when you're picking them this late in the year, it's not uncommon to see that. The capsules especially, you'll see a lot, the little black seeds in there tend to fall out pretty quickly, so you might not get the best chance to see those, but 
you get to see them today, so it's pretty cool. Here's the seed pods after the black seeds have fallen out. So what do you do with purslane? How do you eat it? Well, you can just pick the whole above ground portion. So the leaves, the stem, the flowers, the seed pods, all of it is edible. And I prefer picking it earlier in the year, but this is one of those plants where it doesn't get too tough or bitter as time goes on. Like with some things, like dandelion for example, or like broadleaf plantain, you really want to get as soon as possible, but purslane holds up pretty well. So you can actually still pick it even though the seeds are out. But yeah, I do think it is better earlier in the summer. But anyway, you can just pick the whole above ground portion. So just like take a scissors or just use your fingers to snip them off. So you can eat these raw or you can cook them. I personally prefer them raw because they are a bit mucilaginous. So that kind of slimy texture that you get from okra, uh, they do have some of that. So I just, I'm not the biggest fan of that. So I like them better raw. But if you really like okra or gumbo or like that kind of slimy quality, then you'll probably really like them cooked as well. And they do make a great soup thickener. Uh, if you just throw them in to some soup and let them cook, that mucilaginous quality will come out and thicken the soup. But like I said, I prefer them raw. So usually I'll put them in salads or on sandwiches or just kind of chop them up and add them as a topping to like an omelet or a stir fry or something like that. And they do have a really good flavor. They're not really bitter at all. And they have like a slight lemony sour flavor from the oxalic acid that's in there. And they're super good for you. This little inconspicuous plant here is actually the greatest plant source of omega-3 fatty acids on the planet. So of all the plants out there, this has the most omega-3s. So this is a really great source for vegans or vegetarians to get their omega-3s, which usually you'll get from things like, or in highest quantity anyway, you'll find it in stuff like fish oil. But yeah, these are chock full of them. So that's really great. They're also high in vitamins A and C and have a ton of minerals like iron and calcium. So they're super good for you. And I didn't mention oxalic acid. So sometimes you'll read warnings about that in wild food literature because it is considered an anti-nutrient. It binds in your gut with things like calcium and iron, so it makes them unavailable to your body. But it's a compound that you find in things like spinach and Swiss chard and rhubarb. It's what gives rhubarb that really nice sour flavor. So as long as you eat it in moderation, you'll be fine. Like I've <laughs> even read some wild food literature that went so far as to say that things with oxalic acid are toxic, which of course nobody would say like spinach or Swiss chard was toxic. So I think that's just really because of the bias against wild foods. But yeah, if you're someone who's like really mineral deficient, you might want to eat it in smaller quantities or just be sure to cook it beforehand because cooking does neutralize that compound. And the last thing I wanted to show you is very important. It's a poisonous lookalike. And that's this plant right here. This is called Spurge. And this is another really common low growing sprawling plant that you'll find across most of the US and into Canada. But unlike purslane, it is not edible. It is toxic. It should not be eaten. 
So it looks vaguely similar. Like you can see, again, it's a sprawling plant. Also, it has these reddish stems and these kind of oval shaped leaves. But remember I was saying, personally, the leaves are more blunt at the tip. So they have more of a kind of squared off tip. And remember that purslane is completely hairless, whereas Spurge is actually quite hairy. Sometimes more hairy than others, but you will always find at least some hairs on it. And then purslane has this nice, like, succulentness to it. Like, the stems are really thick, and the leaves have this thickness to them. And Spurge does not have that. These stems are thin and the leaves are really flimsy. And then the final thing with Spurge, and this should be a dead giveaway if you do happen to accidentally pick it, when you break the leaves or the stem, there's this white latex that comes out. So Purslane does not have that, but this poisonous lookalike does. All right, that's the end of my video about purslane. I hope that you enjoyed it and learned some fun things and want to go out there and try purslane for yourself. If you did like the video, please hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell for notifications. It's a great way to help me out for free. But if you happen to have some extra dollars laying around every month, you can go to my Patreon. The link is right down there in the description box. And through that, you can pledge a small monthly dollar amount to help me keep making these free informative videos for you all. So if you could do that, I would super appreciate it. But if you can't, I totally understand. Either way, happy foraging. Thank you.